Hey guys, welcome back to Bob Mupchem. We're going to close out Unit 1121 today, finishing off HNMR spectroscopy, which we started in the last video. So make sure you check that video out before you carry on with this one. In this video, we're going to hone our skill set of how to use this technique for structure determination. But first, a question based on hydrogen environments that would cover what we did in the last video. Pause the video to give yourself a moment for that. Okay, well, first things first, you'll need to draw propen one ol and we've got four different hydrogen environments, the CH3 group. Now remember the two CH2 groups are separate because they have different attachments if we follow our two bond rule and the oxygen on the OH group, giving us four environments in total. So in the last video, we looked at low resolution HNMR with these kind of fat peaks that we integrated. However, if we have a more sensitive instrumentation, then we can look at high resolution HNMR. And we'll see the integral values stay the same but now we get these interesting split patterns where we get one, four, and three peaks respectively on this spectra. And we're going to use this as our final tool using an N plus one rule, I know there's a few rules, to be able to help us determine the structure of unknown compounds. Because the number of hydrogens next to an environment is given by n plus one, the number of peaks in those split patterns. For example, here, this is split into four peaks. So n plus one indicates that there are three hydrogens that are close to this hydrogen environment. And by close, we mean within two bonds, like we covered in the last video. So what could that look like? Well, the integral says this is two hydrogens. So this might be a CH2 group that is next to a CH3 group, as a CH3 group would provide those three hydrogens within two bonds, causing that four splitting pattern. We can look at the other peaks and see that the first peak just above one must be next to two hydrogens because its peak is split into three and the single peak that we have just after two must be next to zero hydrogens as it is not split at all. If we have a look at the molecule that this came from, we can actually see there was a CH3 group next to a C double bond O causing that larger shift with the CH2 group next to the CH3 group. So when we say that we are next to zero hydrogens, we mean within two bonds, the hydrogens on this CH3 group are not next to another hydrogen. And that's what causes that single non-split peak. The CH2 group next to the CH3 group has that big shift and is split into four, like we already said, because it's next to three. And if we look at the last CH3 group at the end, we see it's next to two hydrogens and that's why we see its peak split into three. So this splitting comes from a process called spin coupling and the ratios of the sizes of these peaks actually elegantly follow Pascal's triangle. You'll see we go from a singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet and we see n plus one peaks but if we see the ratio of the size of the peaks it follows the Pascal's triangle model so we'll always be able to sketch or estimate the height and use that to also help our analysis. The singlet being for next to zero hydrogens and all the way down to the quintet representing being near four other hydrogens. For IB knowledge down to the quartet will suffice. So before we put this all together for use in structure determination, we can actually work in reverse and think about from a molecule, what kind of signals would we expect to see? We can look at the number of signals, the expected shift we might see, 
and the expected splitting patterns and we can use table 27 of our data booklet to do this. Doing this process makes using the spectra to find our molecules a lot easier. So let's try it first with ethanol. So as we can see, the molecule has three hydrogen environments. So we're gonna expect three signals, but we can also kind of give an expected shift because we can see a CH3 group is gonna be 0.921. And we can also see that these are next to two hydrogens. So we would expect N plus one is a splitting pattern of three, which would give us that triplet with the ratio of one to two to one. The CH2 group is next to an OH group. So we would expect a much higher shift than that of the 1.3 to 1.4. Indeed, when we scan down, we find that it has a range of 3.3 to 3.7. Now, this one is next to three hydrogens. So we have N plus one rule would give us a splitting pattern of four, the quartet, which had a ratio of one to three to three to one. And lastly, we have our lone hydrogen in the OH group, which has a large range of one to six. And of course, next to an oxygen, we would expect no splitting as M plus one would just be one in this case giving a singlet. So there will be a worksheet specifically on this skill, which I'll mention again at the end of the video. Now let's turn our hand to identifying a compound just from the spectra. We've got our empirical formula up top, and usually you'd be given the integral values here, in this case, which would be two, three, and three. So let's start with the resonance closest to zero, just past one with the integral value of three. It has a splitting pattern of three, it's a triplet. So we know we're gonna be able to use our N plus one rule on this. And we know three hydrogens in the same environment next to two hydrogens in a different environment, causing the splitting. When we pair that with the shift of just above one, that would indicate that we have a CH3 group causing this resonance. Now it's not mandatory, but you can kind of use the empirical formula to check off any atoms that you've already used to see what you have left over. So we've just used a carbon and three hydrogens. So we have C3H5O remaining for our other two peaks. If we turn our attention to the second peak with an integral of three just past two, we can see that this is a strong singlet that has an integral of three. So this is going to be a CH3 group that the oxygen is in the way of it being next to any other hydrogens because it's next to no hydrogens. That's what causes the singlet. So we can remove another CH3 from our empirical formula. And we can also use the shift here to see that these hydrogens based on their shift seem like they're next to a C double bond O, an ester group, because the shift is between 2.2 and 2.7. So we're really getting there now. We only have one peak left, which is around 2.5. We can see it's got an integral value of two, so which means it's two hydrogens and a quartet Splitting of four means it's next to three other hydrogens. Now with this large shift, it would seem that it's also next to the ester group we identified with the last peak. And now that's all of the atoms we have to use. And if we just combine these with a bond, we can see this would be our final molecule. So let's have a go at some simple questions first and build our way up. First question, how many hydrogen environments are there in this compound? Pause the video and just take your time. Pop them up. In this spectra, we can see three specific resonances and 
each resonance must represent a separate hydrogen environment. So we have three hydrogen environments in this compound. The question didn't ask, but we can also see that there is no splitting in this spectrum. But this one might take a little longer. Complete the table for the expected shifts that you would the expected for the shifts that you would expect to see from this compound. Pause the video and give yourself a few minutes. Pop them up. So in this molecule, there were four different hydrogen environments. One on the Cl with two hydrogens in that one, one on the OH, one on the carbon in the double bond, and one on the carbon with the bromine. That means we're going to expect four separate signals. And let's work consecutively from left to right. So on the left, we would expect a shift somewhere between 3.5 to 4.4. It has no hydrogens next to it, so we would expect a singlet. So no splitting or a one peak. Next we have kind of the B hydrogen. If we label them A, B, going from left to right, we would expect a shift anywhere from 1.0 to 6 for this one. Again, it's on its own, so we're going to expect this one to be a singlet and have an individual peak. The third hydrogen or environment C here is on a double bond. So we're going to see a shift of between 1.8 and 3.1. Now it is next to in two bonds to two hydrogens. So N plus one tells us that we're going to have a splitting of three here, and that's going to be a triplet. And lastly, we see the hydrogens attached to the carbon with the bromine so we see the same expected shifts for halogen that we saw for the a environment 3.5 to 4.4 and these ones are next to one hydrogen and n plus one we would expect a doublet so guys get some practice in with this relax and take your time. It can take a bit of getting used to. I suggest doing the worksheets in the order that I've listed them here to get adequate practice. Thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and as always, practice makes slightly better.